In the previous video we looked at the different neurons in the nervous system. Now we will look at the different support cells that make up the peripheral and central nervous system. People often say that you only use 10% of your brain. But what they're actually saying is that neurons make up 10% of your nervous system. The other 90% are support cells. We need these cells to keep neurons healthy, protected and to facilitate speedy information processing. So how do they do this? They provide structural support, nourishment and protect neurons as they are part of the immune system. Unlike neurons, they can divide and change location. However, they do not generate or receive any signals. These cells are known as neuroglia. Neuroglia in the central and peripheral nervous system differ. The neuroglia cells in the peripheral nervous system are swan cells and satellite cells. While the neuroglia in the central nervous system are oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, microglia and ependymal. Let's look at each of these in detail. Mario will look in the next video with you what the anatomy of a neuron is. For this video you mainly need to know what an axon is. The axon is the part of the neuron that transports a signal away from the neuronal cell body to the next neuron or muscle. So what kind of support do neurons in the periphery need? They need structural support, isolation from the environment and help to repair when there's damage. These services are provided by swan cells and satellite cells. Satellite cells surround and support the peripheral cell bodies and swan cells cover peripheral axons and help in axon repair after injury. Let's look at swan cells in detail. I mentioned swan cells cover axons. They can provide two different types of coating resulting in neurons which we call myelated and unmyelated neurons. Myelated axons have swan cells that form a shaft around the axon of multiple layers. This isolates cells from the surrounding tissue. Unmyelated axons have swan cells wrap around them as well, but the cells wrap around a large number of axons and hold them together. This provides structural support and isolates cells from the outside environment. Signaling in myelated neurons is much faster than in unmyelated neurons. So what kind of support do cells in the central nervous system need? They also need structural support, but they also need nourishment and protection. So let's look at the different support cells and their function. The cells are oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, microglia and ependymal. Oligodendrocytes provide structural support to axons. They can also produce myelin that increases the speed of neuronal transmission. Microglia are macrophages of the CNS. They are mobile, clearing and surveying the environment for threats. They have a special shape that helps them put out their feelers. They are part of the immune system. Next are ependymal cells. These epithelial-like cells line the cavities and ventricles in the brain and the spinal cord that contain cerebrospinal fluid. The cells produce the fluid, but also check the fluid's content and help circulate it. This fluid is important to provide cushioning, provide a stable environment and is monitored by the immune system. Lastly, let's look at the star-shaped astrocytes, with which have many functions. They provide structural support, regulate concentration of ions and nutrients in the fluid and can form scar tissue after injury to the central nervous system. Astrocytes can absorb neurotransmitters that have been released by neurons. And by doing this, they can actually affect neural signaling. Astrocytes also help maintain the blood-brain barrier that chemically separates the brain from the body. You learned about tight junctions in week 2. It's the tight junctions between capillary cells that create this barrier, so only very small molecules can pass from blood to brain. This is very important in protecting the brain from toxins, but also to limit unwanted effects of circulating hormones. Astrocytes wrap around the capillaries to help maintain the blood-brain barrier. We have now reviewed all the different support cells that help our central nervous system function well. So to recap some of their effects, structural support, they repair damage, they clean up, they protect, and they also help the neurons fire quicker. 
you can see how important support cells are for the optimal functioning of the central nervous system and that they can also affect neural transmission. We have prepared a separate video to show how glia can affect normal and sickness behavior. You can now do the knowledge test to test your understanding about support cells.